Hi everybody, my name's Doug Wilson, and you're watching Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. I thought for this video, um, I would give kudos to one of the finest mate, knife, knife makers I've ever worked with. Um, and this guy's knives are, in my opinion, one of, if not the strongest, most functional knives on the market, right? Especially for guys in the military, right? If you need a knife that is super strong with a great strong geometry, you know, I'm talking about uh, the tip of the knife, the belly of the knife, the spine of the knife. If you're looking for a really strong knife that has a comfortable, sure purchase, ergonomic handle, those type of things. You might want to look at Mike Wallace from Wallace Edged Tools. Uh, it's www.wallaceedgedtools.com. So if you guys stay tuned, we're going to talk about some of his knives on this segment of Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. We'll be right back. Okay, so I'm honored that you guys could be here with us today. Um, like I said, we're going to go over some Mike Wallace knives. I got a bunch of them here. I own several myself, right? I have a couple here that actually belong to a client that I'll be building sheath systems for to send off to him. Um, so basically, here's, here's how it works with Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace has his own designs that are tried and true. A lot of the military guys, you know, the Army, Marines, uh, Air Force survival guys, really tend toward this type of knife, okay? Um, and I am completely honored to work with him he also builds some of my designs um, actually those designs are collaborations between him and I right it started out as my design and then he put in his two cents and, and these knives are what we came up with as far as you know hard use knives uh, made of a very strong super steel CPM 3V or CPM 154, which is uh, like a stainless version of it. Um, so, without further ado, I'm going to start with the first knife. <clears throat> um, I'm going to get the designs, my designs, right? The, the knives that started as my designs out of the way first, okay? And the first one we're going to look at is... The Delta Whiskey Backcountry, okay? I'm going to give you a really good look at this knife, right? Because that, that's one thing that really irks me about some review channels. Um, they show you the knife, but it's from 10 feet away, or it's from 12 inches away, or whatever. I'm going to get it as close to the camera as I can, while still being in focus. Give you a good, hard look at it. I'm going to turn it, okay? 
3 16 inch thick CPM 3V. Spot on heat treat. Uh, his heat treats are done at Peter's Heat Treat, just like a lot of other custom makers use. Because Peter's does it consistently. He, he produces a consistent, functional heat treat. This is my, my blade. This is the one Mike built for me. This is, I believe, the very first Delta Whiskey Backcountry ever made. After, you know, after we worked on the design and prototypes and plastic models and stuff like that. All right. Now I'll go over the knife. You can look at it, okay? It's, um, I'm going to give estimates on the size. It's a six inch blade, okay? with, I don't know, five and three quarter inch cutting surface, right? Because it does have a choke up choil. And I'll get to that in a minute. I'm an advocate of choke up choils, especially in bigger knives. And I'll, I'll show you why. All right? We got a high saber grind, right? Now Mike, Mike Wallace can also do other grinds. These are custom knives. Even though they're, they are specific designs, you can customize them with him, okay? Now, I'm going to warn you right now, Mike Wallace has a little bit of a wait time, but he's nowhere near some of the other guys out there that are like two, three years. You know what I mean? Okay? Hi, this one's a high saber grind, okay? It's what I opted for. When I got it, Mike had put on it a traditional V edge, right? Um, 24 degree, whatever it is, okay? I change them. When I get a knife, I usually change it to what I call a low shouldered convex grind, right? Which is basically a convex grind with, with, that doesn't have a big shoulder on it. It, it gradually, um, uh, it gradually uh, generates into a point, right? And this is a convex grind, okay? This is a regular V grind, like this, okay? And a convex has shoulders on it, right? That puts a lot more metal behind the edge. This is the edge right here, boom, right? Puts a lot more, and the spine is down here, right? So I got the knife upside down. So basically, I'm doing this with the knife. And I'm showing you the convex edge in macro detail, right? Convex edge puts a lot of meat behind the edge. Well, what I do is I lower the shoulders a little bit, right? And I guess get rid of some of those shoulders so that it's easier to field sharpen. How's that? Okay. Easier to field sharpen. And this is the most effective woodworking, chopping, all around edge that I have found, right? Um, a, a, uh, a traditional Scandi grind doesn't hold a candle to the strength of this edge, right? Um, but there's trade-offs with every uh, edge that you use, you know, every edge that you choose. This one works for me across the board, okay? Everything, chopping, slicing, feather sticking, everything. Okay, takes a little bit of practice to get it on there, but once you learn it, you're good to go. Okay, I put, I put it on almost all my knives, except for some of the traditional Scandi grinds that I have. Okay, um, the scales are G10. Uh, Mike likes to work with G10 um, because you can easily texture, texturize it. Gives you a nice firm grip. It's really tough stuff. This one has white liners with black scales, okay? And you can see the handle's not super thick, but it does fill up the palm. It's ergonomic. It's got a nice palm swell. It's got a forward finger choil, right? A forward hand guard, finger guard. And it's got a rear finger guard as well, okay? Which acts as a lever for chopping, right? 
this this knife right here chops very well this is an all-out wilderness knife meaning an all-out survival knife this is the knife I would take in a survival situation right if I could only take one knife this would be it okay um, now if I was able to take an axe I might not take this knife with me you get what I'm saying but if I, I could take only one tool one metal tool it would be this one okay um, it, it's just I mean look at it it lends itself now you got to practice with the knife a little bit but I, there's virtually nothing this blade can't do right um, including skinning right and food prep okay I've, I've, I've prep you know sliced tomatoes celery beef venison whatever right and it will skin as well it will field dress right um, now some guys uh, would carry this into the field all the time okay some guys might not it might be a little too big for you okay so that's the Delta Whiskey backcountry that's the first of what started out as one of my designs now this one is pretty true to form from the original design uh, Mike helped a little bit with the handle he, he tuned it up a little bit okay made it more his style very comfortable right nice pommel on the back for crushing whatever right um, pass through compression pins a very strong way to affix scales to a knife right and they can aid in lashing this to make it a spear or whatever um, there may be no I'm one of these guys that I don't care what other people say I know what works for me and I know that in certain situations you're gonna have to do things that other people might frown on but the real deal is a lot different than somebody else's book philosophy you know so this is practical exercise here right so you may have to lash this to uh, you know a long stick uh, to get better reach or whatever okay it may happen so you can do that with these it also has a pyro plug right there's the pyro plug and this is Mike Wallace's bow drill divot for a bow drill okay and for those of you guys who think that these don't work think again they do work right and they work much better than some wooden handholds you know some some wooden bearing box this thing offers very little friction on that spindle right I've I've started many fires with this bow drill divot pyro plug okay and you're not gonna damage it right I bet you I've got 30 fires on this at least right and then you got his emblem right here Mike Wallace and then some Latin uh, I don't know I don't know what it says some Latin something right uh, so there it is Delta Whiskey Backcountry CPM 3V just a badass survival knife it has it yes it does have a different geometry than we're all used to right however there's specific reasons it is shaped this way and you're only going to find that out if you get one and use it right almost everybody that has purchased one of these and he sold a lot of them over the last three years um, and the guys who chose to contact me every one of them just loves it right it does this it does this it does this better than this but <laughs> unbelievable right so we don't really market it if this blade was marketed it might be a different situation we might sell more of them but I like custom work custom work that you can't get anywhere else that's what I do with sheath systems you can't get what I do anywhere else right so 
there's that one okay here's the sheath system that I made for it right um, Yellow Hawk customs you know I got everything on it that I like okay um, it's got a uh, now don't think that I can do this with every sheath but it does have an easy lap diamond sharpener on it but I do not recommend them because I have to alter the easy lap sharpener in order to get it on these sheaths and it's very difficult so I have since moved to a different uh, diamond rod okay that's just as effective uh, at you know a quarter of the weight or something something like that <laughs> anyway uh, I got a uh, uh, ferro rod on it that uh, I can't remember who made it for me. I'm trying to remember, but it's the guy who makes them for the clean canteen or can something canteen company. I can't remember. Man, I got terrible, terrible memory. All right, so there's that. This is just what I like on a sheet. And then on the back, I got a large live fire, right? A large live fire. Comes out real easy, right? It's just petroleum and cotton balls on steroids, okay? Um, tech lock for pack or belt carry. Um, you can also attach a molly lock to this if you want. It's got a belt carry system with uh, a nice leather loop my stuff is a lot simpler the stuff that I carry personally is usually a lot simpler than the stuff I build for clients okay so there's that one okay so the next Mike Wallace knife we're gonna look at is another one that started as my design um, this is called the BMF all right and I got the name <clears throat> From the old Gerber BMF, the basic multi-function. Okay, that uh, that knife is no longer in production, so I thought I would borrow the the uh, the acronym, the, the letters, right? Basic multi-function. This is based on an old French trapper design with new materials and a better blade. Okay, this is a bushcrafting wonder. Okay. Nice and traditional for those guys that like that traditional French trapper shape, right? Very comfortable in the hand. This one happens to have a flat saber grind, uh, a high saber grind, 90 degree spine. All of them are 90 degree spines, all his knives, okay? For striking ferrariser or scraping bark, whatever you need to do, okay? Um, 90 degree spine. It's got a continuous belly. Um, this knife is better at skinning than most other knives of this genre because of this continuous belly, okay? Um, it still needs a point. It's that type of knife, right? But it's easier to skin and field dress with this because of that continuous belly. Food prep is easy. Um, Feather sticking. Feather sticking depends on the edge that you put on your knife. Not the steel, not the grind. Okay? Generally, it depends on the edge as to whether it's a good feather sticker or not. Okay? Um, this uh, low shoulder convex grind that I put on this is a great feather sticker. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I have any good pieces of wood here. I can feather stick with, but and I'm not the best feather sticker in the world, <laughs> but you know, it does pretty good, you know. These uh, scales here are a multicolored, it's uh, brown tan white and black this is my favorite scale material that he offers with his uh, textured jig pattern right which gives really good purchase right it's not aggressive because only the tips of your fingers actually touch it right 
The rest of your hand, well, only your fingers touch it. Let's put it that way. The, the webbing of your hand actually touches the top of the knife, which is pretty smooth, right? So it's not aggressive at all, but you get a good purchase, right? Rear lanyard hole, this one also has a pyro plug because it is a traditional bushcrafter, right? Um, and it's very, this is one of the very effective knives of mine in the field, right? For bushcraft, right? There it is. High saber grind again. Um, grinds are like uh, cars. Everybody likes a different make and model of car, right? Well, everybody likes a different grind, but I'm here to tell you the cutting ability of that knife, the actual cutting edge, is what you have to concentrate on. That is what you have to really attend to. That's what's going to do your cutting, okay? You know, if you're, um, if you're batoning wood, right? And this will baton wood just fine. Batoning wood, yeah. The the grind does um, matter a little bit as to as that knife is going through. Is it splitting that wood enough so that it's easy to get through that piece of wood? Is you know that's where the grind comes in. But the edge is what does the cutting. So this is the BMF. Uh, give or take, six inch blade, no choke up choil, doesn't need it. Um, this is a straightforward French trapper bushcrafter, right? Um, three sixteenths inch thick, I'm pretty sure if you want a thinner stock, they'll do a thinner stock for you. Um, in, this is just what he chose to make my knife out of. I would have, I personally, for this knife, would have went for the next one down, which is, uh, what, 5.30 seconds, or, five, is it 5.30 seconds? It, it's more than a uh, eighth of an inch, but less than 3 sixteenths, so. There's that. The BMF. Here's the sheath system I built for it. Okay. Um, originally this sheath system did not have a piggyback on it right it had a ferro rod on the front with a um, with a flashlight also um, but I put this on here as because I designed this quick clip system right this is a piggyback system that you can easily take off the smaller knife and pop it on your belt right Here's the piggyback, right? This is an SE Zula, right? You want to put it back on here. Just put it on there, right? This is the easiest system on the market that you can go from um, a piggyback to belt carry in 10 seconds, right? Instead of having to unscrew this and pop this off and undo that, and right? This, you just pull it off, right? And it's, it's strong, okay? There is a little bit of give, right? There's a little bit of give here, right? But not a whole lot. If it was too much give, I wouldn't do it, right? This piece of Kydex that acts as the spring, the actual clip, is 0.125 thick. And usually it's a little thicker. If I can get it thicker, I usually do. Um, and that makes a good clip, okay? Now, can you take this thing, wrench it back, and break it? Sure you can. You can do that with any clip system, right? Um, but for general use in the field, it's pretty damn strong, right? Pretty, uh, pretty convenient, functional, right? We're going to put it back on. Uh, and it's not coming off of there. That thing's not coming off. Right? So, uh, you know, all you naysayers, oh, that can't work. That doesn't work. Oh, you can't do that. <laughs> all right. 
quick, li uh, quick clip system. So here's the system I made for the BMF, right? This has a uh, combat lock on it, right? These, in my opinion, because they have a redundant lock, right, are a little bit nicer than a tech lock, okay? Um, and like I said, a little bit more secure. Uh, this is actually built for military application, but anybody can buy one. Okay, uh, that's the BMF from Mike Wallace, right? Here's its companion knife, okay? This is the LMF, the light multifunction. Also started out as my design. This is my take on, well, my take and Mike Wallace's take, right? On the Ray Mears Bush Lore, right? That knife is very expensive, right? This one is not. Although, you're still going to pay... I don't know, 250 bucks for this. It's a custom knife. You can customize it any way you want. It's CPM 3V, one of the strongest steels on the market type thing, right? So, newer materials, and it's my take on the bush lore, right? So, it's, it's a great little bush crafter, right? Real strong edge, right? Um... Another high saber grind. Contrary to popular belief, a bushcrafter does not have to be a Scandi grind. Okay? We designed these to be able to do other things as well, not just woodworking. So it's got to have a slightly tougher edge or a tougher edge on it, right? So that's what you got. Okay? Now this one is 530 seconds, I think. It's between... <laughs> three sixteenths and an eighth so whatever that is that's what this is okay a little bit a little bit thicker than an eighth inch okay which is perfect for this size knife okay uh, so this is the like I said LMF light multifunction same scales as the BMF like I said you can customize it any way you want he's got like 20 different scale colors you can get liners um, different grinds. You have to talk to Mike. He's the knife maker, right? That's the LMF. They're all on his website. All these knives are on his website. Okay? LMF, and I just built a basic belt carry with a ceramic. Um, the, my knives are usually sharp already, right? I usually don't allow them to get dull so that I have to re-sharpen them, right? Usually all I need is a strop or a ceramic, right? That's usually all I need is a strop or a ceramic and I can you know build that edge back up to hair shaving sharp okay next knife the spear one this is Mike Wallace's design okay this is more of a hunter combat uh, fighter utility blade. <laughs> okay. It's got a unique blade geometry. It's got this forward cant on the on the handle from comes up the handle right and makes this you know ten degree curve here or whatever. Um, for more effective chopping, right? You got to do little chopping tasks. Um, this knife, I'm telling you, is really comfortable, right? It's got a clip point, traditional clip point, nice drop point belly, right? Um, it's got some uh, thumb jimping up here, non-aggressive, not too aggressive. Uh, shave outs right here, right? It's shaved out here and here, 
and that's where your fingers sit, right? You, you pop that finger up into the finger guard, wrap around that little thinner area there, and you got a great purchase uh, that's not coming out of your hand. And this is textured um, micarta. This is textured micarta, this handle, right? Pump, uh, nice pommel on the back. Pass-through pins, right? Compression pins, again. Um, CPM3V, full flat grind on this one. This is a full flat grind. This is a slicing maniac, but still has a very strong edge because I put that uh, low shoulder convex on there, right? There it is. This is the Spear 1. All, this is all on his website. Spear 1. Most of his knives of this nature have a sharpening choil or they have a, uh, a finger choil, right? A choke up choil. And here's the system I built for it. This one's mine. Like I said, no frills on my personal stuff, right? I put a Special Forces crest on there just as something cool, right? A reminder of my days in the military. And a small ferro rod. Got a small ferro rod on here. This one is the only knife sheath I believe I've ever made that has snaps. Okay? Just to show people why I don't like snaps. Okay? These are pull the dot snaps too. They only go on one way. But, problem is. Sometimes snaps are hard to get on, right? Problem with going on one way, I don't, I don't even know the benefit of it, right? They just say it, hoping piece of people, you know, they say it, hoping people will believe it. You know what I mean? If it's going to pop off, you're going to pop it off from this end, right? It's going to pop off. So the way you normally take it off, and that's how it's going to bump up against a tree, or you're going to hit it with your hand, or a wait a minute vine is going to snag it and it's going to pop it off of there and you're going to lose your knife okay um, this is the reason I don't like snaps they are a liability in the field generally is there a way to configure snaps so that they're not as much of as a li of a liability sure right but generally people don't do that right they just put the snaps on there and they hope you're gullible enough to say to yourself, ah, there's no chance that's going to come undone, right? <laughs> okay, right. You get what I'm saying though, right? You're going to get the facts here. I'm going to give you a fact. Snaps do come undone in the field. I've seen it happen quite a few times. I'm not going to say many times, but over the last 45 years in the field I've seen it happen quite a few times where guys have either lost their knives completely oh shit where the hell is it well those sta the snaps had to come undone your knife is gone right or it took them a while to find it backtrack right um, we were on an op uh, one time in, I in Idaho and uh, guy lost his knife because of snaps we never found it right he went the whole lot without a knife right um, he, I can't remember he, I think he probably got another knife from somebody who had two right <laughs> but anyway there it is okay spear one Mike Wallace Wallace edged tools okay let's move on to the spear two okay now this now, I'm sorry if these knives are well used. I know you're used to seeing knives that are brand new on review channels, but I use my knives. So they're going to be beat up when I show them to you. <laughs> um, here's a Spear 2. Now, this isn't. Oh, shoot. That reminds me. I always got to remember to drink, I, I get dehydrated easily. Put it there. 
This is his Spear 2. This is an older design of the Spear 2. This knife was his personal knife that he gave me. He gifted it to me. So, I'm going to keep it forever. Um, it's the only one of its kind. Um, I, the blade's shaped a little differently than the rest of them. I, I can't tell you how. But the newer ones are even bad asser looking than this, right? The newer ones. Now this is a combat utility fighter, okay? It's got a double hand guard, right? This knife is not coming out of your hands. It is a fighter. You can fight with this knife right it has fighting geometry built into it right but it's also combat utility uh, you can use it as a bush crafter it's a good field knife uh, a hunter right it's a good hunting knife look at the belly right for skinning that's a belly you can skin with right field dressing um, this one happens to be 360 Three sixteenths, three sixteenths CPM three V. If you guys don't know what that steel is, look it up. Okay, as far as super steels go, it's up near the top, right? Uh, without spending a whole bunch of money, right? I got to throw that in there because somebody's going to put in the comments, "Oh, so and so steel is better than that." Yeah, but you're paying eight hundred bucks an ounce for it, right? Anyway, CPM 3V, 3V is a tried and true super steel that uh, is extremely tough, extremely wear resistant, um, very, maybe not extremely, very, much more than other regular carbon steels, 1080, 1065, 01, A2, all those common, 1095, all those common high carbon steels much stronger okay much that's why he uses this steel and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg to make a knife out of it um so this one happens to have a pyro plug got jimping on the handle which he doesn't normally do okay i like it right gives really good purchase right um just look at the handle look at the erg ergonomics on that right it's thinner up here so that it it kind of it locks it in there right it's 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 locked in there it's it's not gonna like that handle's not gonna like slip right it locks it in there as long as you got your fingers closed this is a badass blade it feather sticks it chops it it does everything in the field that you're gonna want it to do um I'm surprised he doesn't sell a billion of these a year. This is a badass knife. Badass. And the new ones are even badasser. Alright? The Spear 3 from Mike Wallace. Um, and, you know, obviously Mike Wallace recommends Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors sheath systems for his knives for an aftermarket Kydex sheath because they just go together. Plus, I do his knives all the time. So I'm really good at molding and building sheath systems for Mike Wallace's knives. Same with Peter Kohler's knives, uh, same with um, Brenton Good or some of the other knife makers that I work with. Um, I'm good at doing their knives because I do quite a few of them, right? When someone wants Kydex, they recommend Yellowhawk, the guy contacts me, and off we go, right? We build you a system, right? So this has got our flip-out ferro rod on it, right? Flip-out ferro rod. You can take the spine of the knife if you want, right? And strike that ferro rod. Actually, you want to get it into a position where it's... Let me think here. Let's do this. All right. There we go. That's easy to strike with. I usually put it between my fingers like this, right? Now, if this thing 
Now there's the stopper right there. That's a stopper, right? So I lift it over and then put it back and it stops it, right? It keeps it where it's supposed to be. But even if the stopper's not there, this thing is pretty, it's under tension, okay? So it's not gonna be moving around on you. Um, if you don't like it where it is, and there's another place you can put it that works better for you, go ahead and do it. I don't care. Do your own thing, man, right? Spear three, uh, spear two, right? I put some uh, slots in there just to make it look cool. Um, I'm not a, a, a milled slot advocate. Uh, I don't think they're needed. Uh, it makes the edge of the sheath weak. Um, does that matter to most? I don't know. I don't know. It matters to me, right? <laughs> um, it just makes it look cool. It does offer more mounting options, but it's there's other options that can take its place. You know, the, the place of the holes, the milled slots. So I'm not a big advocate of them. I can do them, but really not needed, you know? Okay, that's it. Tabby Dangler, all that neat stuff, y'all hawk stuff, okay? Uh, and then here's a couple, all right, that I'm getting ready to do for a client. This is a, a brand new, just made uh, BMF, right? with black scales, nice and comfortable, um, lightly textured, traditional uh, French trapper design with a nice geometry, blade geometry. Look at that belly. It's a continuous belly. Great food prep, great slicer, great feather sticker. Um, Mike is good at designing blades, right? that function well hard use blades hard use right there's that one and then a field mouse which is the same as this I'll show you this in a second this is a field mouse same type of scales they go together um, the BMF here has um, coyote tan or looks like dark flat dark earth liners between the scales Right here, you can see it. See the liners. He's got all kinds of, of different scale material, um, scale colors. You have to work with him. These are custom knives. Like I said, he'll build you what you want within reason. If you want something totally off the wall that he knows he shouldn't build, he's gonna tell you, hey, I don't think it's gonna work. I get guys who want me to do certain things with sheath systems, and I gotta speak up. Hey, that's not gonna work, brother. You know what I mean? So, field mouse. This is his general utility necker type style, right? And I got one right here. This is my personal field mouse. Look, it goes with all the other handles too. Look, but everything's got to match. And the great thing is. All these knives, they match my backpack too, because that is imperative. That your knife handle, it's got to match your backpack, right? If it doesn't, you got no business being out there, right? Okay. Anyway, Mike Wallace is a master at aesthetics, right? And yeah, it's dirty. I use it, right? This one's got a hell of an edge on it. Holy crap, right? And then this is the sheath system. This thing does everything. It's a tabby dangler, it's a belt carry, it's a necker. I made it to do everything and I can do the same with yours. Uh, let's wrap up this Mike Wallace Edge Tools, uh, Wallace Edge Tools video. Uh, like I said, www.wallaceedgedtools.com. Check out his website. He's a great guy. Um, like I said, he does have a weight, but it's not nearly as, as... This guy is a premium knife maker, right? These knives are, I'm going to say, battle-tested. They're really tough, right? That's why I like them. They're, these are knives that you can definitely say, I could bet my life on this knife. I can bet my life on this knife, right? I can bet my life on it, right? 
Um, I could bet my life on it. I can bet my life on it. I got to keep saying that because there are knives on the market that are really popular that I personally wouldn't bet my life on. You know what I mean? So you got to be careful, right? All right, guys. Uh, this is Doug Wilson from Yellow Hawk Customs Outdoors. Thanks for watching. And hi, Mike Wallace. Hi, Mike Wallace. How you doing? Don't be a stranger. <laughs> All right, guys. See ya.